Hey, my name's Larry, and I'm with Under the Bridge Flies, and we're going to tie a golden stone here. Um, <coughs> I tie my golden stones just a hair bit different than most people, I think, but I haven't seen any really with this stuff um, I use on mine. So, anyway, I hope you like it. Uh, start out with a Daiichi 1270. Uh, I'm tying mine in a size 12. You can use, you know, pretty much whatever you want around this area uh, size 10 size 12 size 14s are very popular uh, fish like big bugs so um, we're going to use a 760 or a 1 8 I'm sorry a 1 8 Cyclops gold bead and then we're going to wrap this with some lead wire and I'm just using a 0.015 lead wire on this because um, when I tie nymph patterns streamers nymphs i always wrap lead in them so if you're buying flies from me you're getting flies with lead in them um, i tie all of mine this way and so the ones i sell is tied the same exact way as what i use so um, once you get that on there push that stuff back get your zappa gap out and if you haven't got zappa gap yet you ought to get you some it's good stuff lasts a long time push that all up and it's all locked into place you don't have to mess with it no more so we're going to use a unithread 80 in dark brown and i'm just going to start my thread right behind that lead right there and we're going to bring it down and get rid of that tag end all right, so let's bring that thread all the way down here. And when your thread's hanging, you're going to run this thread down probably halfway between the end of your hook and the front of the point there. And then you're just going to start building you up a little thread dam right there on the end. Just make you a bump right there on the end of your thread. Wrap it around six, seven, eight times. And bring your thread back up. We're going to be using a brown goose bite on these. Um, I got these, they're in a, I think this is like a 2 by 8 bag, but uh, this is one I've already used, and you can see I used quite a bit of bites off of this already, but that's the same bag, so there's a lot of bites in here, and the thing about these bites um, I'm selling on my site is I use these personally because they're... I mean, I've not, I haven't gotten a bite yet that had a bunch of holes in them, you know. I mean, as you can see, these are nice bites. They're good. They're flexible. They doesn't, they don't bend. I mean, well, they bend, but they don't break when you bend them. Um, I tie some uh, little midges and stuff, you know, that I use bites for the body. And these are just great for that. So, but I'm going to run mine and I run this about three quarters of the way, about three quarters of a hook long is what I make my tails here. I'll put that one on that side just like that, throw a couple wraps around it, we're good to go. Grab you one for this side and we're going to do the same thing. Um, if you're new to this, please just uh, put them on one at a time until you get really good and really used to it. I'm still doing them one at a time because I like the way it comes out. Um, some guys put these on, just grab a hold of them, put two on, but and that's great. But I just I got more control over what I'm doing with these two, so I can put them wherever I want to, and I can make them to where if you see that these things are, I mean, just lined up really nice, and they're the same exact length, and they're pointing the same way. Um, but you got more control over it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some scud back. This is just some scud back stretch, body stretch. This is one eighth. Um, it's brown. And we're just going to tie this in. And we're just going to come up here on that thread a little, on that lead a little bit. And try to get it centered. Um, if you have a lot of issues with starting scud back, cut you a little point on the end like an arrow, and it'll make it a lot easier for you. Just so you know, a little helpful tip. The tip there. Can't even talk today. I keep moving this back and forth because I want to see where I'm at. You know, because I want to make sure that 
I'm, I don't have no thread showing there. I want to make sure that when I put my this over, it's going from here to my bias. I don't want to, you know, any space there with, you know, thread coverage from where I tied my bias in. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. All right. Next thing we're going to use is some gold. UTC size small, of course. Like I said um, I don't use nothing but size small usually. I got a size mediums of a lot of colors and they've been in them drawers for a long time I don't really use them an extra small unless I'm tying a 22 or a 20 something really really tiny um, I don't use it either small I just it, I like it it gives a good rib and it's great for uh, copper johns it's you know I use it on my wire worms my neon nightmares I mean I, I just use small all the time so Anyway, your, uh, <coughs> your dubbing, <clears throat> I'm using a gold stonefly, golden stone. This is stonefly nymph dubbing. This is available on my page at uh, underthebridgeflies.com under dubbing, under stoneflies. There's three colors of this. I used to mix my own dubbing for stoneflies until I got this in. Um, I try to order a new package of dubbing color or chanel or you know something when i make my orders you know to my supplier i uh usually get me you know some new colors some new stuff some new items so i can try it out so i can offer you know a better variety to you guys and i got this i seen these and i got it and i quit making my own dubbing this stuff is great for stone flies i mean you can see that it's got some red i mean this is just, this is the stuff here. That's a cat's meow, as they say, right? So, um, we're going to go ahead and start putting some dubbing on here. Um, use just some wax or lick your finger or whatever it is that you might want to do there. But make you a uh, nice little line of what we're doing here. And you want it just, you know, your line consistent, your line straight. You don't want a bunch of bumps or nothing in your dubbing. If you're new to this, dubbing, you know. But we're just going to start right back in the back there. And we're just going to work our dubbing up. And if you start, see, you can pull down on that dubbing to tighten that up, you know. But if your, you know, your dubbing looks like it's running away from you, you know, stop and pull down on it a little bit and it'll tighten that dubbing up and look, we'll get a nice tight dub body there. And I mean, now we want to add, I'm going to add a little more because I want the top half to be just a little bit larger than the bottom. We want that taper on our body. So it's, you know, easier to go back in my opinion. And we're just going to go, you know, about halfway or so. And see, it's just going to add that little bit of taper there. And then for my way back, I'm going to do the same thing. And I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm using a little. I mean, I cut that in half even. You know, just a little bit of dubbing. And get it on there pretty good and tight. And then you see, you know, if you pull it down, it's going to tighten it up. So, and then that's giving us a nice tapered body there. So when we take our scud back now, and we're going to pull that over, and you want to go about three quarters, you know, of your hook section. You know, make sure you go about three quarters. Somebody pinged me. <laughs> about three quarters of our body. And we're just going to go ahead and capture that. And you just go ahead and let that, you see, just hang off the front. Now we're going to go ahead and run our wire rib and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my vise here so you can see this rib a lot better as I'm doing this once I get my first one going because it's kind of hard to do this sideways but now I got my first one going I'm going to turn my vise a little bit so you can see this and hopefully I can do this without messing it up too bad but if you give it a little wiggle as you're you know coming through there moving it side by side you can, uh, you're, I mean, really digging in, and I'm pulling pretty tight. I mean, don't pull tight enough that you're breaking it. You know, just keep some good tension on your fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hear that squealing. So, <laughs> and then 
just going to get this ribbed up there and you can see that really digging into that body and that's what I want I mean I like that especially on my scuds boy I mean I torque my scuds down pretty good when I rip these things so um, most of my scuds I use a 4x or a 5x um, tippet um, and I don't use cheap tippet either I use this uh, uh, climax floor carbon the stuff's like 14 bucks a roll and that's what I use for my ribbing on a lot of my scuds and stuff my uh, scuds and sow bugs because I really like to torque them down but you can see your you know and if it turns a little bit on you don't worry about it because you can adjust that entire thing I mean if you got a twist in it you can just sit there and pull on it and I mean straighten that right on out you know the bottom that wire you know really crushes up that bottom but we're going to deal with that here in a minute so don't worry about the, that either um, so when you're done with that you're just going to get that scud backing and you know bring it back and get you back to your dubbing there and then just tie it in real good there so you want to grab you another goose by it now and the first wing that we make is going to go to the back of our hook and we just put it right on the side there throw a couple wraps around it um, this is I mean I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pushing this one in with my finger when I do this, though, because that way I can really line these up and get them, I mean, just dead perfect, you know. So now that I got those in, I'm just going to wind my thread up and bring it back a little bit. And now I can adjust them side to side if I want to. But, I mean, they're pointing the same direction. They're, I mean, straight across there. They look really good. I like my bites to line up and be pointing the same direction and all that stuff. So um, trim those off. All right, we're going to grab a little bit more dubbing now. And we're going to build up our thorax. And you want your thorax to be just a little bit higher than your scud back. Because you want your scud back to kind of, you know, um, go up and over. So just uh, grab you some dubbing and just start filling in. And... Do a little more on here. This is a awesome fly pattern, by the way. If I haven't said that already. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little bit more as I bring it up forward. And I mean, and then we're going to grab us another by it. And this one's going to go about half the length of your hook. Or uh, if you go half, just point it right in the middle of that bite that you just put in the first time. If you point that right in the middle of that thing, then, you know, that's a real good spot for it. Uh, you can get your fly, put it wherever you want to, but that's just, I'm just showing you what I do. So that way we're going to, you know, try to make everything even. All right, so we just uh, get us a uh, clip off there. Gonna clip it off there. Now all you gotta do is just take this and fold it over and see how it's pushing all that fibers forward there. Don't really pull on this though. I mean, just fold it over. You don't have to pull on that none. I mean, you don't have to stretch the crap out of it. The only reason you'd be stretching it is if you're doing a real small fly and you need to stretch it to make it fit. But on this, this is perfect size for this scud back. Um, when you're fishing this, your thread, your dubbing, you know, all this stuff, you know, is going to shrink from getting wet and everything. If you put a lot of tension on this, I've seen some guys, I mean, they'll, it'll just come right out, you know. Then you pull your line up and you got a piece of this, you know, scud back just hanging off the back there. And, you know, I mean, fish, yeah, some fish are that stupid, but <laughs> we're not trying to, you know, throw a couple around her. Um, we'll finish this thing. And cut that off. Get you some Zappa Gap. It's available under uh, glues and coatings on underthebridgeflies.com, by the way. And it's a lot cheaper than on eBay. I'll tell you that right now. Not that it's a cheaper product, because it's the same exact thing that's selling on eBay that I'm selling. I'm just selling it to where people can afford it. You know, I mean, 
I could put it on there for as much, you know, same amount of money and not worry about it. But take you some Velcro. And I told you we was going to deal with that underbody here in a second. And you can just take you some Velcro and, you know, just snitch that up a little bit, you know. Once you get, uh, you're going to get some uh, real long fibers out of that too, by the way. I'll give you a little nip there here and there. And look at the bottom of that fly. I mean, that's, you can't even tell that we really suck that wire into there now. But there's your fly. And I just like this scud back on these golden stones. But they work really good. I've caught a ton of fish on these things. These in the black. But if you haven't tried this dubbing, uh, go up under the bridgeflies.com under dubbing tab and it's under stoneflies um, dubbing there's three colors there that's it the golden stone this stuff is amazing i'm telling you here's some of the black stone i'll show you some of this real quick but look at that black it's got i mean just all kinds of different colors in there i see i mean there's red purple i mean this is some great stuff the fish love this stuff by the way um, I catch a lot of fish on the North Fork with this black stone fly with that dubbing. Um, I don't know if it's the glitter that attracts them or what, but I mean, it really makes a difference. This is, I mean, the best, the best stone fly dubbing I've ever found right here. And it's, I mean, fairly cheap. If you don't have it, if you ain't tried it, uh, go to my website, pick you up a pack of that stuff or two and give it a shot i promise your stone your stone flies are going to look great with this stuff and the fish are going to love it too so anyway um the fly itself and the materials under the bridgeflies.com all for sale um there's a bunch of videos on there this one's going on there um go in there check them out under the description before the video it tells you what exactly this fly will be tied on so you can have your materials ready before you even start the videos um, I know that's one thing I start the video then I got to stop it and gather my materials and stuff all the stuff's right there for you um, Check out the hooks every hook on there has a description of what that hook is used for So I mean if you're looking for a stone fly hook check the description out under the Daiichi hooks or the mustad hooks or whatever And it'll tell you what the hook is used for I mean I know I have trouble with that sometimes trying to figure out what hook to use so I put all that stuff in the descriptions to help guys out, you know, so, you know, anyway, check it out under the bridgeflies.com. Thanks for watching my videos. We'll be making some more. I hope you watch them too. Have a great day.